Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to the Cozy Corner. My name is Lee and this is my library. So grab a mug of something yummy and settle in for some talk of books. I'm very excited because today I am starting my brand new series on booktube called Late to the Party in which I read some of the series, particularly fantasy series, that I missed out on during my massive reading slump between college and when I started my booktube channel. Um, <laughs> I have done my best to avoid all spoilers for these series um, and honestly even if I hear them in conversation I have no idea what you're talking about so <laughs> I've done my best to make sure that until I had time available to read them that I did not partake in any spoilers. Um, so what better way to start 2022 than to begin with the queen herself a Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I will be reading this over the course of January um, and vlogging all of my thoughts and my opinions and my reactions. And then next month in February, I will pick up the second book in the series, A Court of Mist and Fury, and so on and so forth. Uh, eventually, I will run out of <laughs> books in this series during the year. So if you have any other suggestions of fantasy series um, that you would like me to react to as a first time reader, um, go ahead and comment them down below. I probably will have read some of them, but feel free to comment whatever series you want. I'm so excited because um, so many people talk about this book, make references to this book. There is so much bookish merchandise for this series, and I have no idea what any of it means. So I thought it was high time to <laughs> uh, pick this up and get to reading it. I am very excited. I can't wait to fall in love with characters. I already know that Resand is going to be just the worst thing that happens to me in 2022 <laughs> because that's just my internal character. I love a bad boy with a conscience. <sighs> anyway, I'm really excited to start this series because I really want to spend more time in the genre that I love and celebrate the new releases or the ones that I missed because it wasn't in my reading age uh, when I was still reading. So anyway, without further ado, let's read this book. Okay, um, I just... It went really quickly, but I made it up to chapter 5, page 42, and I'm going to use one of my favorite bookmarks that I got in my uh, bookish advent calendar from the fictional boutique, I Smell Books and Snow. Um, so far, it's been going really well. Like I said, it's moved really quickly. We've met Farah. Um, we have met Nesta, who I already don't like. <laughs> Um, and we've met Elaine, um, her two sisters, and her father, who doesn't have a name, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, it reminds me a little bit of that beginning. It reminds me a little bit of the family living situation in The Bear and the Nightingale. Um, kind of similar vibes. Um, and then, as I'm sure all of you know who've read the book, um, Farah kills a wolf in the woods and this massive beast bursts into her home and says that she actually killed a fairy um, who was disguised as a wolf or turned into a wolf. I don't know. I don't know how their magic works yet. <laughs> um, and demands as part of the treaty between mortals and fairy, fae that um, it's a life for a life. So Farah either could be killed or be taken to... Um, oh, what's the name? What's the name of their country? Perithian? Yeah, and live with this creature, who I think is Tamlin, um, based on uh, the synopsis on the back. Um, so a whole four chapters, a rip-roaring start to the book. <laughs> um, yeah, it is giving me Bear and the Nightingale vibes, um, and a little bit of... Um, Shadow and Bone or Six of Crows and the even a little bit of Game of Thrones with the dissidence between mortals and Fae and the prejudices against the horrible legends of the Fae enslaving the mortal people and the horrible things they did to them. So I'm curious to know how much of that is exaggerated, how much of that is actually true. We've met the child of the children of the blessed. Yeah, the children of the blessed, who are the people who worship the high fae. We've met them too, so I wonder how much they're going to play into this story. But so far, so good. Um, I don't know if I'll read any more tonight. We'll see. Um, I might just, but I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those books where I read 
it's gonna be hard to stop if I start reading. <laughs> Um, but I think maybe I'll read a few more chapters before I go to bed tonight. But so far, so good. Um, I like Farah. Um, I think she is a really powerful, um, feminine protagonist. I know that their relationship changes. That's in the synopsis on the back, so we'll see how that happens. Also, I want to know where Rysand, Rysand, however you pronounce his name, comes in, um, because... Everyone's been saying that he becomes more crucial in the second book. So I'm curious to see where his origin story is. So anyway, that's my update for now. So far, so good. I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, and I will update you when I've read more. Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. <laughs> it is January 1st, 2022. Um, it's been a really good day, actually. Um, quiet with family. Very cold. It was uh, minus 14 this morning degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> when I got up with a pretty decent wind chill. Uh, I found winter. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> um, but it's been good. Lots of good homemade food, good time with family, quiet and relaxing. I actually got a good amount of writing done today, which is good. Good way to start the new year. But I thought I would give you an update on A Court of Thorns and Roses. I am on chapter 12, page 102, about that far through. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I just n noticed, actually, <laughs> the cover design, now that I've read this far, um, is a wolf-like creature with an arrow through it. And if you've read the first ten-ish chapters, you know the significance of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really liking it. Um, I like Farah. I like Farah. Farah. I'm going to say Farah. Um, I like that she isn't a pushover. Um, I like that she stands up for herself. I know that this book and really this series gets, um, steamy, um, a little spicy, but, um, not too much of that, but I can see where it's going. Uh, <laughs> um, she's in Perithian. She is in, I think that's the spring court. I think that's Tamlin's court. That hasn't really been explained, but I'm pretty sure that's where they are. Um, but she's met Tamlin. She's met Lucian, um, and Alice. And she has been told about the illness that is um, currently ravaging Perithian and um, magic is going wrong. And so all of the High Fae and other fairies are cursed. I think, or maybe it's just High Fae, I can't remember, um, are cursed in, to have masks permanently attached to their face. Um, so i um, curious to know, oh, and the cauldron has been mentioned. I know that the cauldron is a big thing um, that's happening. Um, there's also a woman that Lucian is afraid of, um, who I guess is very powerful. And we've met the Bog, B-O-G-G-E, I think that's how you pronounce it, Bog. If that's not correct, let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, that's what Tamlin is currently obsessed with. So, she's settling into her life at Tamlin's court in Perithian. Um, things are going pretty well so far. It's moving really quickly, and I'm a little worried... <laughs> that I'm just going to get into a reading groove and I'm not going to be able to update you with my thoughts. Um, but so far, um, I really like her writing style. It's frank. Um, not a whole lot of info dumping, which is good. Um, I am curious whether we're going to get an explanation of how magic works. Um, she's been getting bits and pieces. Um, and is doing that thing a little bit that's sometimes irritating in romance or in um, romance-related fantasy where the main character will ask a question and then the internal dialogue will be, I know he's not going to answer my question. I'm like, so why did you ask the question? <laughs> why did you put the reader through that? Don't ask stupid questions that you know you're not going to get the answer to. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, but it's tolerable, so... Um, she's learning. I'm learning. She doesn't know who these people are. They're strangers to her. Um, so anyway, I can forgive a little bit of that because she's new to the story. <laughs> um, but it's really good. Um, I kind of like the atmosphere. I would love a land of eternal spring. I think that's really cool. At least I think that's how the lands are organized. Um, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of world history explanation. We just know that there's a war that happened between the Fae and the humans, and there's a treaty. Um, and because of the treaty, that's why Farah ended up in Perithian, life for a life. Um, so, anyway, 
I have some questions, but um, I don't know whether they'll get answered, so I'm going to keep reading for now to see if they do. Um, but I like it. Like I said, I'm worried I'm going to get into a groove and uh, not update you until I've finished the thing. <laughs> so I will try. I try to make myself pause every five chapters to kind of assess my thoughts, but I'm currently on chapter 12 because I didn't stop at chapter 10 because I wanted to keep going. So <laughs> anyway, I'm enjoying it. And um, I probably will give you an update tomorrow, but we're driving home tomorrow, which is about a six hour journey. So uh, maybe I will, or maybe I will update you on Monday. We'll see. Anyway, going good. And I can't wait to read more. Hello everyone. Um, it has actually been a few days since I have read anything in Akatar. <laughs> um, when I left off, the last time I left off, um, I actually read a little bit more after I vlogged, but then um, I was traveling home and getting readjusted to my new work schedule. Well, I say new, but getting back to my work schedule after vacation, which is always takes a, always takes a little bit of adjustment. So it's been a while since I've read anything in here, but I am on chapter 15, Fair Adjust went to the woods to capture a surreal, who is this mystical creature where if you capture them, they will answer any question. Um, and so she captured one because she wants to find out more about who Tamlin is um, and the history of Perithian because she discovered this mural in Tamlin's house that depicts um, how Perithian and the Fae were created and also the war with the humans. And so she wants to know more about who he is and she discovers that Tamlin isn't just a high Fae, he's actually a high Lord which is like one of the big kahunas of governing of the Fae. So he's a real important guy. Um, and after the serial had answered a bunch of her questions and being typically cryptic as you would expect in a fantasy book, um, another um, magical creature, the Naga, show up who are even more dangerous than the serial, who looks like a Grim Reaper type character. At least that's what I picture them as in my mind. So anyway, Pharaoh's life is once again in danger and so the serial warns her to warns her to run and to stay close to the High Lord, to so, to stay close to Tamlin, which I think is interesting because, I'm going to put this down because I'm going to gesticulate with it too much. Um, at this point, I'm just going to voice the question, am I wrong? Or in the beginning of the book, when Farah first came to Tamlin's house, did he and Lucian hint at her being a part of a prophecy or a legend? Maybe I read that completely wrong and I was just inserting things in the t into the narrative that weren't really there, but I'm fairly certain that's what they were hinting at. And it makes me wonder if Farrah is involved or like an integral part of um, breaking the curse uh, that's infecting the Fae or the sickness that's infecting the Fae, which is why they can't remove their masks um, and why bad creatures are breaking into... Um, Perithian or his spring court, Tamlin's spring court. Um, I think that's what's happening. <laughs> I could be wrong, but given what the serial just said about sticking close to Tamlin, it kind of makes me, or it kind of confirms what I was already thinking about Tamlin and Lucian, that it's surprising to me that even though Farah killed, um, oh, what's his name? Andres? I think it's Andres. Anyway, um, they were both really heated that Farrah killed Andras, and, but there has to be a reason, other than maybe Tamlin's a good guy, but there has to be a reason why they left her alive. And there also has to be a reason why Lucian isn't more mad at Farrah because he was the one who was like super heated that Farrah killed Andras, who was the wolf. Um, but he's sort of tolerating her, and so it makes me wonder if she's not who they need. I don't know. I could be completely making that up in my head, but I'm kind of predicting that that's where it's going to go. Um, but I really do like um, both Tamlin and Lucian. Um, Tamlin, I think, is a good boy. He's a broody good boy. Uh, Lucian is a bad boy with a conscience. And I'm just saying um, that I've discovered about myself in my 20s in particular that um, it's the bad boys with the conscience for me. Bad boys who do bad things for good reasons or who have a positive character arc, just the hit different, you know? Sorry, not sorry. They're delicious. They're my favorites. So anyway, I like them both. Tamlin is very much 
um, broody football quarterback. That's the vibes I get. Um, <laughs> um, football quarterback who has seen some painful stuff and is going through a lot. <laughs> and then Lucian I get is sort of the um, like swashbuckling bad boy who also likes to crack jokes and be sassy and a little inappropriate. That's Those are the vibes I get. Um, I really like Feyre. Um, I like that her motivations are fairly clear, um, that even though she has resigned herself now to living in Tamlin's court because that's how she secures her family's safety and um, well-being, she's not just letting sleeping dogs lie. She's asking questions. And if she doesn't get the answers to those questions, instead of just living in ignorance, she's going and finding her answers, which is um, why she captured a surreal. So anyway, I kind of like Lucian and Farah's relationship. I think it's interesting. Um, I think they could eventually become really good friends. I know that passion develops between Farah and Tamlin. And now I also could be wrong. And this could just be my, the fact that I have not read anything um, about Akatar. I've just sort of heard what people have mentioned in passing, but don't she and Rhysand end up together? I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know what? Don't correct me. Let me learn it on my own. <laughs> um, but I am going to sit down and read some more because I really do like this story. It's been a while since I've read anything like super fantasy in depth. So, so, um, I'm going to read a little more. I probably won't vlog me reading. I'll probably just give you updates. I will probably most likely only turn the camera on if like something juicy is about to happen because I know that this is an adult fantasy. Um, at least I think it is. So there are some steamy things that are going to happen. So I will definitely um, read those live on camera. Um, I'm going to read a little more of Akatar and I will update you when I'm done. Hi guys. It is later. Um, I'm obviously in bed because um, I'm tired, but I wanted to read before I go to bed. But the cutest thing just happened. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting Belle and the Beast vibes. Like, I'm getting major Beauty and the Beast vibes uh, from Tamlin and Farah. So Farah really loves to paint. And Tamlin just explained to Farah all about how he had saved her family and, like, protected their memories from the trauma of him bursting into their house and, like, w warned them that they needed to run because of the danger that was happening in Prithian. And she was, like, really caught off guard and touched that he did all of that for her family and she was finally honest about the fact that she liked painting. And he's like, you can paint wherever you want and I'll get you what you need. Also, there's a gallery that you can look at. I'm like, that's just... Beauty and the Beast vibes. <laughs> the whole exchange was so cute. I don't know what it is about men blushing. It just gets me right in the heartstrings. This literally is the cutest scene. Um, and I can tell that she's... Um, if she's not aware of herself, um, her breath caught when he smiled at her. So she's into him. I think he's into her. But I'm curious as to what's going to happen because it's very early attraction in the book and I have a feeling something major is going to happen that's going to make her question his feelings for her. So, But for now, I'm just really enjoying that was a really cute moment. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens next. Not Reese and showing up. And Farah thinking he's beautiful, just as I start shipping her and Tamlin together. I did not need another love triangle where I love both. But who knows? Some people don't like Reese Hand. I currently am full on Tamlin. <sighs> and he was just such a gentleman too, and saved her from some really creepy fae who... We're probably going to do something gross to her at the right, or at the, what is it, Colin Mai? Their fire fest? Fire night? Their fire fest? Their fire night? Not him being a savior and her thinking he's gorgeous when Tamlin is clearly in love with her. Okay, I'm going to read one more chapter and cut myself off. I'm PO'd because 
This doesn't need to be a love triangle. Tamlin's amazing. I don't want anyone else. <laughs> Watch me fall in love with Resan too. Chapter 19. <laughs> it's like minus 10 degrees below zero and I think I need to go put this book outside. That wasn't even the juicy part. And I am, I am so single. <laughs> Chapter like minus 10 degrees below zero and I think I need to go put this book outside. That wasn't even the juicy part and I am, I am so single. <laughs> so chapter 21 happened. I know a lot of people will think it's odd that I reacted so strongly to uh, a spicy scene, but I am someone who does not normally enjoy smut. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's how I was raised. Maybe it's just because I think in most cases, romance sings better when it is a secondary plot point to what's actually happening in the story so I don't necessarily go for the romance genre but um this one hit a little different just a little bit um because it came halfway through the book I gotta watch my language <laughs> anyway um it's now two days since I've read that I was reeling a little bit because of how I went and stood out in the negative 20 degree weather because it was steamy um, so I'm on chapter 22 of Akatar, duh, um, and so I thought I would read at least one chapter live because I want to see what happened after chapter 21. So, um, I'm assuming you're watching this vlog if you've already read the book, so I'm going to talk about it because I need to talk about it. Um, so Tamlin had to participate in the ritual for the fire knight, which basically means that he gets possessed by this spirit of like a wild animal, even though he already transfigures into a wild animal. And Farah, because she um, is a curious little idiot sometimes, um, <laughs> uh, decides that she wants to go to the fire knight, even though both Tamlin and Lucian told her, don't. Like, not only will fey people like judge you and harass you which did happen um it's a little bit of a trigger warning um like your life is in danger but they didn't explain to her really why or what fire knight is and so she decides to show up she met a tall dark handsome stranger which i know is resand like i i know that's him his name was never said but i'm like that's who it is um i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's the vibes he gives off <laughs> anyway um Lucian catches her, takes her back to the manor, and explains to her this whole ritual thing, and she's like, oh, so Tamlin's gonna get some tonight, and while possessed as this really dangerous animal who, like, will go hard. Um, so she locks herself in a room, and then a few- <laughs> she gets hungry, and girl, same. So, <laughs> she goes and gets a snack, and, um, uh, Tamlin has not, uh, purged all of the beast out of him and he's literally just like I smelled you and I was like oh no <laughs> this is not happening no no thank you but also thank you <laughs> anyway that happened she smacked him uh, that was heated um anyway uh it's gonna be the there's just there's a moment in it 
that I literally had to put the book down and just sort of stare into the middle distance, kind of like I'm doing now, um, when he bites her. And I was like, this should not Nope. <laughs> anyway, um, still reeling a little after that. I don't know why, but I am getting hardcore Beauty and the Beast vibes from Farah and Tamlin. And I am, I ship it. I, I love it so much. I think they're really cute together, even though we know nothing about why Farah is there. The motives as to why Farah is there, we don't really know why Tamlin is all of a sudden attracted to her. We don't know any of that. I have a feeling that's going to ruin things later on. And then the recent of it all. But uh, for now, I'm really enjoying it. So um, I'm going to read this chapter after this steamy scene to see what happens. And I thought I would uh, vlog it while I do. So I have coffee, sustenance. Here we go. Just gonna flaunt the bruise he left after biting her. She's just gonna make him talk about it at the lunch table. <laughs> um, and she's back to calling them pigs. <laughs> Heated moment gone. <laughs> Righteous anger uh, resurfacing. He got her flowers. This is not what I needed today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I finished chapter 22. The only... The only thing clouding this... Honestly, really well-written relationship... Is I don't know... Where all of the anger at the beginning of the book for Farrah killing a fae went. That's like my only nitpicky thing. Because like both Tamlin and Lucian were furious that Farrah killed another fae, like heartbroken. And yes, it was a life for a life thing. And that's why she was supposed to live because Tamlin didn't want to kill her. She was supposed to live in the spring court, but there's no like, it just went away almost immediately she moved in. So, like, there was a really cute moment of him saying, you know, every other person that I've loved or had as a lover, they never understood me. And, like, you're a reminder that I'm not alone. And I was like, okay, but where did the Venji anger go? And, it, again, there's that part of me that maybe I did misread that beginning part of she was there for a reason other than just... The life for the life thing. I'm a little confused. I may have to go back and reread to make sure that I'm not reading incorrectly. But um, the other thing that I want to talk about, because I think it is a trope we see in fantasy, in honestly any book where romance is a part of the plot, um, we get a lot of, I'm not pretty. I don't think much of myself. But this person who is my counterpart to this romance thinks that I'm beautiful and has to tell me that I'm pretty. And we got a little bit of a moment of honesty from Farrah when um, she put on the dress um, or they were talking about her wearing a dress and she was saying, being here in this place where the responsibility of caring for a family was lifted from me, I began to appreciate who I am and there was light in my eyes, eyes that didn't reflect any other member of my family, they're mine. Um, she was still humble, um, saying that she wouldn't 
call herself beautiful, but she appreciated that she looked more like how she envisioned herself. And I liked that because I'm not a huge fan of the mentality of forcing humility to make the male counterpart seem more desirable. They think I'm beautiful, therefore I have value, that kind of thing. So um, it's an irritation that I have with a lot of tropes that come with books like this. So anyway, that was a random thought that popped up while I was reading that chapter, but um, really cute, more relationship developing. There's still just under half a book left, so um, I am going to put it down for now, which is hard because it's really good, um, and then get back to work. I'm really enjoying this. I think this will probably be one of my favorites. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Chapter 33, the alternate plot to getting Farah to Perithian. It's a real thing. She wasn't there because of some treaty. They basically trapped her into coming to Perithian. And it is, not, is it not the typical trope of situations like this where a girl goes to this or is led to this ridiculous circumstance by a guy, she falls for the guy, and then it's revealed that she's not there simply because this guy was interested in her. He, she was brought there for ulterior motives, to break a curse or to help this man. It had nothing to do with her being in love with him, even though they are in love and the female protagonist gets mad and she leaves. Is that not the normal trope? And yet all of this is revealed that Farah was brought here as a part of a way to break the curse. And she knew nothing. She was subjected to the guilt of killing a fae, the ridicule from living in a house full of fairies, the trauma of having to leave her family behind, not knowing whether they were safe, having to trust these villains that she had grown up believing were bad. She was subjected to all of that and was told nothing about the curse. And her reaction was, oh no, this man that I love, I have to go save him. She's not mad at all. And I am livid. <laughs> I'm so mad because I had to watch this really fiercely independent female character go through all of this stuff and survive all of this stuff and be subjected to all of this stuff because someone wanted to, her to break a curse and then she just was like, but I love him anyway, so I'll forgive him. Excuse me? No. No. So I'm really hoping that at some point in this book, and if not this book, then some point in the series, she at least says to Tamlin, hey, doofus, I love you, so you should have told me what was going on and I would have been all too happy to help because at this point, I love you. We have this relationship, but you sent me away after living in Perithian, after getting to know you, falling in love with you, understanding the beauty of your world. You sent me away because of some danger that I didn't know I was supposed to be involved in. It has less to do with the fact, now, I think because I'm verbally processing this, of the trauma, more to do with the fact that she loves him and she was forced to do this thing without understanding the full parameters of this decision that she was supposed to make. <sighs> I am mad. Anyway, chapter 33, <laughs> where Alice is just explaining all of this th to Farah. I was heated the entire time I was reading it. Um, but I'm gonna back up because it's been a while since I've updated you and I just need to sort of process through all of this. So the blight at the beginning of the book is Amarantha, um, this who's declared herself to be the High Queen of Perithian, who is actually from Highburn, which is this island fey nation to the west of Perithian. And um, she's the Blight. We love a fierce female villain. Um, she's an excellent baddie. Haven't met her yet, but can tell that she's going to be real good. Um, and she cursed all of the high fey lords in Perithian, stripped them of their powers. And she basically, because she knew Tamlin from her previous life, um, became incredibly seduced or like... Um, lusted after him and so gave him an ultimatum you can either become my sex slave basically or i can curse you and he said over my dead body will i uh sleep with you and so she cursed him and all of his people and 
basically said you have seven by seven years, so like 49 years, to lure a human girl who hates fairies. She has to kill one of your fairies in cold blood with hate in her heart because that's what happened to her sister with a human. And um, get her to fall in love with you. And once she confesses her love for you, the curse will be broken, your masks will be removed, whatever. Um, I doubt that that actually would have happened had that happened because we know that villains aren't good at promises. Anyway, she sets this curse into motion and Tamlin, who knew that Faye and his country were getting, getting killed off, there were threats in the human realm, he sent Farah away three days before that timeline ran out and she loved him. And he didn't offer her the choice to say, hey, I'm going to, I love you and I'm gonna be here with you and I'm gonna help you whatever way I can, death be damned. And she, he just sent her away and she, so she went home and also discovered that Nesta um, wasn't uh, glamored. So she remembered everything that had happened, um, even though Tamlin had done his best to like make her family forget what had happened. Nesta remembered everything. Uh, so anyway, Farrah came back because um, she knew that this threat wouldn't stop and that she really loved Tamla and that she wanted to go save him. And she came back and all of this stuff was revealed to her and yet she still wants to go under the mountain because he's been kidnapped by Amarantha now. She still wants to go under the mountain and save him. <sighs> I just, Farrah was such an independent protagonist and yes, if she genuinely loves him, if this is true love and she genuinely loves him, his life is at stake and she's not going to do what he did um, and just pack her in a box and send her away. She's going to go fight for him. Okay, so maybe I just redeemed her a little bit in my eyes. But I am i was so mad for her. And so I really hope she has that moment of, hey, <laughs> not cool, dude. Um, anyway, that was a lot. <laughs> Um, so I am on chapter 33, um, and I, I am really enjoying it. We did meet Resand, had a full-fledged conversation with him, and he is the bad boy, um, that's just pushing that line for me. Um, like, he's a, he's a evil boy. Um, and yet some people are saying that he becomes a little more crucial, a little more likable in the second book. Um, so I am waiting to see what happens. But we did find out that Rhysand is Amarantha's current bedfellow um, instead of Tamlin. Um, so I'm curious to see how those relationships play out. Is Rhysand gonna end up with Farah? I don't know because you know what? <laughs> Tamlin, because, even though he is beautiful and lovely and he's a great male lead in this story, when you do stupid stuff like this, it just sort of tarnishes the Prince Charming relationship that I have with those characters, which is fine because no one is Prince Charming. No one can be that perfect. But as soon as something like that happens, then the alternative candidate, which is Rhysand, some suddenly becomes so much more appealing. And I really don't want that to happen because I really ship Tamlin and Pharaoh. <laughs> oh, anyway, I think I've mentioned earlier that this really is giving me big Beauty and the Beast vibes. Like, big Beauty and the Beast vibes. So um, makes me kind of wonder if there wasn't a little bit of that subtext when she was writing this book. So oh, anyway, I'm calmed down a little bit now that I've really processed all of that. But I thought I would give you an update. Um, I have a few days left to finish this before this video is going up. So um, I think I will whiz through the rest of it. So I'm really excited. Um, I hope this ends spectacularly. I'm kind of wondering, because there's this much of the book left, if there's not going to be a little bit of a cliffhanger. I would hope so. That's my favorite way to continue a series, is if the first book doesn't wrap it up and there's a big cliffhanger at the end that makes you want to read the second book. That's my favorite way to continue a series. So anyway, that's my update for this. I'm going to go take some deep breaths. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It is... Um, oh, I don't even know what day it is. It is Sunday, um, a few days before this, uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses vlog is supposed to go up, so I thought I would give you an update as to where I am. Um, I am on chapter 35, ooh, almost dropped it, page 304. Um, I think Sarah J. Moss is just one of those authors who 
writes a story and you think it's gonna end and she wraps it all up and then just completely launches into a brand new adventure in the middle of the book. <laughs> so we knew that Pharaoh is going to go rescue Tamlin. She decides to go under the mountain to where Amarantha's lair is. Um, and so she goes, sees Tamlin sitting next to Amarantha as his, her sex slave or something. Um, and basically barters with Amarantha saying, um, if I complete your tasks or solve this riddle, I get Tamlin in return. Um, and Amarantha says yes. And I feel like when she said yes, she did a big old wink next to it because we know that she doesn't play fair. Just get that vibe from her. I also thought it was really interesting that, um, so often I think female villain characters are made to be over-sexualized. Um, in terms of their appearance, they're beautiful, they're like a black widow. Um, people are attracted to them because of their overall outward appearance. <clears throat> and I kind of liked, not that I support any form of shaming the female body, um, or any body, really. Um, I like that she put an emphasis on the fact that her overall appearance really wasn't model, like, standards what the world would consider to be model standards um she was just a attractive woman not excessively so by like i said society standards but she just had it was all about the power magic and her power and her manipulation that made her such a domineering person and i really like that emphasis on the fact that beauty is not the sole motivator for someone who has power. If you are powerful and you are a master of your craft, that is enough. Granted, we're talking about a villain here, but <laughs> anyway, I kind of liked that, that she made that distinction of it's not because she's hot that she's evil. She's evil because she has the ability to crush you <laughs> uh, with her power and her manipulation. So um, anyway, I like Amarantha as a villain. Also, no idea where Resand is. Pretty sure he was supposed to be her current sex slave. Um, don't know where he is, so we'll see. Anyway, Pharaoh just got beaten up and drugged to a prison cell uh, and is about to enter in all of these challenges that are spaced over months. I'm like, there's literally only a quarter of the book left and this is going to take place for another half a year. <sighs> anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do, because there are only... Mm, 46 chapters so I have about 10 chapters left I think I'm just going to read in my normal five chapter increments um, and then vlog me reading the last maybe chapter or two um, so you can see my reaction to what's gonna happen there's also a spoiler for A Court of Wings and Ruin in the back or excuse me A Court of uh, Mist and Fury uh, which I'm not going to read I'm going to save that for when I actually pick up the book so anyway I'm gonna read some now and I will let you know when I finished another five chapters. What we're not going to do is remove Tamlin from the picture and begin to paint a whole vision as to who Resand is as an attractive partner. We're not going to do that. We're just, we're not going to do it. Nope. <laughs> so I'm on chapter 40. Literally six more chapters to go. I don't know what it says about me or my psyche. <laughs> I really so desperately want to be completely satisfied with the Prince Charming football player type character. And like, Tamlin as that was steamy enough and I was fully happy with it. And then she just has to come in and insert another character that is just my kryptonite. And I just... <laughs> I want so hard to be that typical hero love interest person. <sighs> and then literally every word that comes out of Rhysand's mouth, I'm like sure just completely shatter my 
projected image <laughs> of what I wanted to happen. <laughs> sure, you could do that. Oh, uh, anyway. Um, <sighs> I'm so mad. Um, it's really good, though. Um, she's about to start her second test. Um, I also think that I know the answer to the riddle. Um that she's struggling with. I'm fairly certain. I just had the worst thought. <sighs> and see, this is sometimes where the author part of me, the writer part of me, can sometimes ruin books for me because I will imagine an ending that would be what I would do, which is not what usually happens, um, rarely. I'm wondering if, I'm just gonna make a prediction, that the answer to the riddle is love pretty sure that's the answer um because that's half this book <laughs> but I'm wondering if she doesn't know the answer because she doesn't actually love Tamlin wouldn't that be the most heartbreaking thing like she like the way that Amarantha described love in that riddle is that all consuming could completely ruin your life love um and maybe she doesn't feel that for Tamlin granted she's putting in work to free him so maybe I'm just being too sadistic in my prediction but anyway she's about to start her second test resand is like a drug habit you can't kick <laughs> however not a fan of roofing which is pretty much something that happened over the last chapter he dressed her up in like really objectifying clothing and then just drugged her and made her do stuff to him um, granted, not anything too graphic, but it's still dehumanizing when you have to do stuff and you're not fully in control. Um, so, he loses a few points in my book for that. Um, but I still think he could be called a quasi-gentleman, because he didn't do anything, he just made her dance, which... I hate redeeming that, because it's still a gross, grody thing to do, so... If he ever apologizes... If not, then that will be a permanent black mark uh, for the High Lord of the Night Court. Anyway, um, yeah, six chapters left. Um, I might read some more. I might go to bed. I don't know. But I will update you when I've read another five chapters. And then I will, or if something super crazy happens in the meantime, and then I will vlog the last chapter. It's almost over. I can't believe it's almost over. I can't wait to read the next one. Hello everyone. Yes, it is the next day. Yes, I am still in the sweatshirt in which I slept in last night because um, I made myself go to bed <laughs> at chapter 43 of Akatar and because I was like, if I, if I don't go to bed now, I'm not going to get enough sleep and um, I read longer than I should have because I woke up this morning with a pretty bad headache. <laughs> Um, but I took some Tylenol, we ate, we had some coffee, we're good. Um, and then I read some more. I ended at chapter 43 last night, right before Farrah was about to start her final test. Um, and so I read all the way up to the final chapter. And like I said, I really wanted to vlog my reaction to the final chapter because... Whew, um, some big stuff was set up for A Court of Mist and Fury. Um in which I'm really excited to read some more about. So, um, I really think it's an interesting plot structure that we really didn't get to know Resand until, like more about his character until the last six-ish chapters. We really only got to know him while she was going through her trials, which I think is an interesting, um, way to do character development. We don't know everything about him fully, but we know some big things as to why he um, is with Amarantha, the circumstances of him becoming a High Lord. We got a little bit of that. And I think that's really interesting way to set up uh, a sequel. So I've kind of actually really enjoyed that way of revealing what I am assuming to be is the third part of a love triangle. Um, I, I don't know <laughs> where I'm sitting between Farah, Resand, and Tamlin. Um, but given the fact that um, Chapter 45 just happened and um, she beat Amarantha and then Tamlin killed her like a boss, um, 
I mean, it's pretty clear that she and Tamlin have a really strong relationship. So I am curious to see how Reese and, and Farah's relationship grows because she did make a bargain with him to go live at the night court for a week every month. So anyway, I don't think um, <laughs> anything in this book was quite as shocking as that first uh, scene in chapter 23 between Farah and Tamlin. Um, I think after that happened, my I was more like adjusted to the level of steam that came with the rest of the book, but it was a really good plot. So um, I'm gonna read the final chapter on camera so that I can vlog my reaction, and then uh, I will give my final thoughts. They turned her into a high fae. Ugh. <laughs> Seriously? And of course, Amarantha dies, so Resand disappears. We're not gonna see him until the next book. <sighs> Okay, so I know that mating is a thing in these books, and I full on am thinking that she has like a. I know that Resand has. Oh, Resand is back, by the way. So so much is happening. Um, Resand has the ability to talk to her in her mind, um, and I'm kind of wondering if that's his power or whether it's because they have that connection, because she felt the sense of him like tugging her to go meet him on the outside of the mountain. I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna mate even though she's in love with Tamlin. That's my prediction, which would be just the worst because I like them both. <laughs> And, Ta and Marie Sam just had like the most tender moment together of sort of bonding over their mutual darkness because Farrah had to murder fairies and so she's really dealing with the guilt and they just had this really close moment of bonding over the darkness and he full on just recognized that like went through like the full like mating realization I'm 100% certain that's what that is and then he disappeared just left her <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> if that's not what happened, then I am curious to know what happened, but I'm pretty sure he just realized that she was his mate. <sighs> this is the worst, best way <laughs> to end a book. Okay, so I just finished and uh, I really liked the ending. It was a really cute moment to see um, Alice and her nephews reunited at the end of the book. That was cute. Um, and I think it's a really cool way to sort of leave multiple things hanging in the balance. Um, I really like that it, it was sort of a gentle cliffhanger. Um, there are several plot lines that could get resolved or could get more complicated in the second book. Um, so, like, the fact that Farrah now has to go spend a week every month at the night court, Resand had that moment of, like, body-jarring realization about something about Farrah, which I'm pretty sure is that he realized that she was his mate. Um, and the fact that Farrah is still reeling from what she had to do and killing those Fae and her final challenge and that some PTSD that she's still wrestling with and I have a feeling that that's probably going to be what complicates her relationship with Tamlin um 
and I think that really set up really well the second book so um overall I really really enjoyed this it was a very quick read um I've seen a criticism from a lot of people that this isn't necessarily cutting edge fantasy it it didn't necessarily change the game of the fantasy world but it's good fantasy um that's a critique that I've seen a lot and well I kind of agree there was nothing really earth-shatteringly new about tropes or plot um in here I think the world and the characters really make this book sing um it was really 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 uh fun to read it went really quickly um I do love Farah. I think she's a great heroine main character protagonist um I liked Tamlin. I love Lucian. Um, I think he's going to be one of my favorite side characters. And of course, Resand, literally within the first five words, I was in love. So um, <laughs> don't like that about myself, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, I think this was a really good read. I do have some criticisms. I think some parts of it were predictable. Um, that's usually the mark of good fantasy for me, is if I'm completely caught off guard by a, a plot twist or a delivery of a certain trope that I don't see coming. But most of what happened in here was fairly predictable for me, um, mostly because I spend a lot of time in this genre and am fairly familiar with the, the tropes and, um, I guess you would call them the stereotypical fantasy plot points. Um, like the riddle, that one was fairly obvious in her in her challenges. Um, there it was a little bit of insta-love between Farah and Tamlin. I thought that developed really quickly. Um, I'm not sure the reveal of the curse was delivered well enough. I kept wanting Farah to claim some of her independence because the insta have kind of erased her um drive for advocating for herself when someone either did something without consulting her or took advantage of her or what have you she lost a little bit of that um when she fell in love with Tamlin um which was a little disappointing because that's not something I particularly enjoy about fantasy when someone loses their autonomy in terms of saying, hey, that was a really crappy thing to do. And yes, we love each other, we're in a relationship. But that doesn't mean you get to make decisions for me, we're partners. Um, that was a little disappointing. Um, but short of those things that are mostly me being picky about a genre that I spend a lot of time in, um, it was really enjoyable. Um, I cannot wait to read the second one um, next month. Um, I will be reading A Court of Mist and Fury. I will probably um, give this currently um, four stars, four out of five stars, um, mostly because I know this is a series and I don't want to fully say, yes, this is a five star series without reading the whole thing, because um, that's the whole goal of this late to the party series. Um, but I will put together my fully formalized thoughts, formalized, finalized thoughts in my what I read in January wrap up video. So you can check that out when it comes out at the end of the month. Um, I am really excited to read A Court of Mist and Fury. Um, I'm really glad I picked up this series because I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great way to start the year. I will be reading A Court of Mist and Fury next month, and I have a request. If there are moments in that book, chapters, scenes, whatever, um, that you would love to watch a first-time reader react to, please leave them in the comments below. Any chapter, any scene um, in A Court of Mist and Fury that you think would be... <laughs> Uh, entertaining to watch someone react to for the first time leave them in the comments um, because as much as I want to record my genuine reaction to these I also want to know what made these books good for you so you can watch someone <laughs> uh, read it for the first time because I think that's a really satisfying thing uh, for people who keep wanting to recommend books to other people <laughs> anyway this was a great way to start the year I can't wait to read the next one. If you liked this video, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel because it really does help me out and let me know what you guys want to see. As always, a huge thank you to the friends and family who have readily supported me on this journey. It truly means the world to me and I can't wait to see what's on the next page. Cheers.